What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hicker Scuba Marine. And today's video is going to be a crash course in scuba diving physics. And we're going to take a look at everything you need to understand before you take a professional level scuba course, such as say your dive master class, your assistant instructor class, or even your full-fledged instructor course. Now I'm going to try to do this in under five minutes, as recently I had a student who challenged me and said I couldn't teach scuba physics in under five minutes. So let's take a quick look and see if I can do it. Starting out, of course, we got Boyle's Law. Boyle's Law deals with pressure and volume. As one goes up, the other one goes down, and vice versa, because Boyle's Law basically says pressure and volume are inversely related. Moving on down, we got Henry's Law. Henry's Law deals with the absorption of gases and more importantly, the absorption of nitrogen. We know through the dive tables and the dive computer that at a certain depth for a certain amount of time, we own gas a certain amount of nitrogen. During a surface interval, we actually bleed off a certain amount of gas as well, and that's basically Henry's Law 101. Dalton's Law deals with partial pressure. What is partial pressure? It's simply what makes up a hole. So if you look at standard breathing gas, we know it's made up of oxygen and nitrogen. To be exact, the partial pressure of that oxygen is 21%. The partial pressure of that nitrogen nitrogen is 79%. Moving on down, we got Charles's Law. Charles's Law deals with temperature and pressure. If I increase temperature, I'm also going to increase pressure and vice versa. If I cool off something, I'm going to start losing pressure. We mainly see this with scuba cylinders. If you've got a scuba cylinder that's filled to the max, say a working pressure of 3,000 PSI, and it's at room temperature, as soon as you jump into a cold water environment, you're going to cool the cylinder. You're also going to lose pressure of that cylinder. Dealing with Archimedes Principle, this is where we deal with buoyancy. If we're floating, we're positive. If we're sinking, we're negative. If we're in the middle, of course, we're neutrally buoyant. That's Archimedes Principle 101. Now, staying with pressure here, of course, we're going to look at atmospheric gauge, hydro, and total pressure. Atmospheric pressure is anything above the surface of the water. Gauge and hydro pressure is anything below the water. If we took the two, added them together, of course, we get a total pressure. That total pressure can be seen here on a chart. Here at the atmosphere, we have a total pressure of 1. At a depth of 10 meters, 33 feet of salt water, or 34 feet feet of fresh water, we have a total pressure of two atmospheres. I have an atmosphere at the surface, an atmosphere here, add them together, that gives me a total atmospheric pressure of two bar or two ATA. And I can go on down. Now there is a difference between fresh water and salt water, and that's why we're going to see several numbers here, 10 meters, 33 feet of salt water, 34 feet of fresh water. The biggest reason we have that difference is because the density of fresh water and salt water is based off how much it weighs. As far as fresh water is concerned, it weighs 62.4 pounds per cubic foot, and of course salt water comes in at 64 pounds per cubic foot. Now we're going to deal with high pressure, intermediate pressure, and ambient pressure. This is where we come into scuba equipment, primarily our tank and our regulator system. If you take a scuba tank, you crank it on, of course you're going to have high pressure. It doesn't matter if it's a low pressure cylinder or a high pressure cylinder, it's simply high pressure. When you put your regulator on, or more importantly your first stage, you're going to have intermediate pressure. So as soon as you turn that tank on, the first stage is going to convert high High pressure into intermediate pressure. It's going to send that intermediate pressure through the hoses. It's going to come down to the second stage. Now, as you operate the second stage or simply breathe in through it, it's going to convert intermediate into ambient pressure or otherwise known as surrounding pressure. So it's workable, it's breathable, it's something that you can use throughout your dive. Now, the last thing we're going to talk about real quick is changing depth into atmospheric pressure because it's very simple to do. All you need to know is depth. You need to also know whether you're in fresh water and or salt water. If you're in salt water, you're going to use the increments of 33 feet. If you're in fresh water, you're going to use the increments of 34 feet. You simply to go from depth to atmospheric pressure, you take your depth, you divide it by 33, and you add the atmospheric back to the surface simply by adding 1. That will give you atmospheric pressure. If you're in fresh water, do the same thing, but change 33 out for 34. Now, to reverse that, to go from atmospheric pressure into depth, you simply minus the atmospheric pressure here at the surface. You times it by 33 or 34, respectively, whether you're in fresh water or salt water, and that's going to give you depth again. Of course, we use this anytime that we're dealing with, let's say, lift theory or sac rates or RMV rates or the whole scheme of things. Guys, that is Scuba Dizing Physics 101. It's everything you need to understand before you take a professional level scuba course. I hope I met the challenge of my student. Guys, if you like this video, simply smash that like button for me. If you want to know more about scuba diving physics, check out the SSI Science Diving class. Make sure during your open water class you really pay close attention because all this is in your open water class as well. Guys, I really appreciate you watching this video. If you've got any questions, please put it down in the comment section below. As always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Like us on Facebook, pin us on Pinterest, subscribe to us here on YouTube. YouTube. And as always, guys, we appreciate your business. Guys, we really appreciate you watching our videos. If you liked it, make sure to give us a big thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, simply hit that subscriber button for us and make sure you hit the little bell to turn on all notifications. If you want to see some other cool videos, make sure to click these links here. They could be scuba tips, they could be diving videos, search and recovery videos, or gear reviews. Once again, guys, we really appreciate it.